number seven of the WOD Games. How are you guys? I'm Dan Williams, and this week I've prepared for you a couplet sandwich. The bread of this sandwich, guys, is two lots of 100 box jumps. 20 inches for the girls and 24 inches for the guys. In the middle of these two lots of 100 box jumps, we have a couplet of toes to bar and ground to overhead. The ground to overhead weights 40 kilos for the guys and 25 kilos for the girls. The structure of this in terms of the reps, guys, we are going 10 toes to bar and we're going to descend down to one. The ground to overhead, ascending from one up to 10. So it'll be 10 toes to bar, one ground to overhead, nine toes to bar, two ground to overhead, eight toes to bar, three ground to overhead, and so on. Until we get to one toes to bar, 10 ground to overhead, and then of course, finishing with that last set of 100 box jumps. Let's have a look at the movement standards for these three movements. Standard for the box jumps. As previously mentioned, guys, we're going to 24 inches and girls are going to 20 inches. Again, we're looking at the start point of the movement and the end point of the movement. Start point is with both feet planted on the ground. The end point is with both feet on or above the height of the top of the box with hips and knees open. What this means, guys, there's a couple of different ways that you can get up under the box. You can do your standard jump where you launch with two feet and land with two feet. Note that your entire foot does not have to be on the top of the box, but some part of both feet must. So if you just have the balls of your feet on top of the box, that's absolutely fine. You can step up onto the box. You can jump up and step back down. It is purely up to you. Again, as long as hips and knees are open at the same time on or above the top of the box. This means you can do the game standard jump, where you jump, open, control it, and then come back down or you can jump on and open those hips and knees as you're in the air for your next jump. That's fine guys, as long as your hips and knees are open above the height of the box, it is a legitimate rhythm. Standards for the toes to bar. You must begin the movement hanging from the bar with your hips open at the bottom. From this position, you must take some part of your foot to contact the bar. It doesn't matter if it's your toes, your foot itself, or the front of your ankle, but it can't be above the ankle. The important part here is that you're not taking your toes past the bar, you're taking your foot to the point where it actually contacts the bar. From here, you're returning back to open hips at the bottom. A kick with this movement is fine, guys. What you can't do, however, is swing off a box or swing by jumping off the ground and use that as all the momentum to start that movement. You must generate that kip under your own volition, not by jumping off a box or off the ground. If you're unable to do the full toes to bar movement, the sub that we're allowing, and this will still count as a prescribed score, is two knees to above hip level for every one toes to bar rep. So the standard we're using for this, these hanging knee raises, the top of your patella must come above the crease of your hip. It's almost exactly the same as that air squat standard that we use, guys, where your hip drops below the top of your patella. In this case, we're looking for your knees to come above that hip crease. Two of these equal to every one toes to bar. Alrighty, standards for the ground to overhead. A couple of different ways you can do this. You can power snatch or you can clean and jerk. Obviously, you can put squats in there if you want, but with the weights that we're looking at, this shouldn't be necessary. 40 kilos for guys, 25 for the girls. Standards here, the weight must begin from the ground. If girls are using the smaller plates for the 25 kilo ground to overhead, what you'll need to do is use something, preferably other plates, to build the height up so the bar is starting at the same height as it would if you were using standard bumper plates. From this position, you're taking it from contact with the ground to overhead. In the overhead position, knees and hips must be fully open, and from the side, your ear must be showing clearly in front of your arms. Arms locked out overhead. On this movement, guys, we are not requiring you to bring your feet inside shoulder width at the top of the rep. So if you don't want to move your feet during these reps, you don't have to. This is the standard for your ground to overhead. Snatch or clean and jerk. Let's have a look at the rationale behind the construction of this one. Firstly, the meat in the middle of this sandwich. What we're looking at, guys, is a closing of the hips and a flexion of the spine in the toes to bar, 
and an opening of the hips in that ground to overhead. The important thing here is that we're doing two opposing movements. They're both, however, going to be very limited by your ability to hold onto the bar, whether it be that bar for the toes to bar or in the ground to overhead. Two opposing movements, really testing that abdominal strength and gymnastic ability in the toes to bar and the weightlifting ability in the ground to overhead. This, of course, is sandwiched between the two lots of 100 box jumps. This is really going to test that work capacity. It's enough reps that you're really just going to have to dig in and get the work done. One major point on technique here, guys. You should be fine with the toes to bar and box jumps because you purely be limited by your ability to keep going. But on that ground to overhead, whether you're choosing the snatch, which would be a slightly faster option, or the clean and jerk, which would be slower, but perhaps an easier movement to complete, what you want to be aware of as you speed up is maintaining that neutral spine. The tendency will be to round that lumbar spine as you go, which at high reps, 55 reps of the movement we're completing here today, at high reps, it is going to become an issue for the lower back. So keep that technique together. Not only is this going to ensure that your back stays together and allows you to keep going for the duration of the workout, but it will ensure that you are reducing your chances of injury. Keep that back safe. Have a good warm up for this one, guys. Look after the back, both for the sake of injury and to improve your performance later in the workout. This promises to be a good one. There should be a big variance in times here. The top performers should be going super quick. Those people who are not going super quick, just work your way through it, guys. Work on getting those reps done. Use the opportunity to practice the movements and perhaps a couple of things that you haven't done before. It'd be great to see a lot of people snatching. This workout is for time. The fastest competitors will be at the top of the leaderboard. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the workout. Love to hear any feedback. And I will see you again next week for what number eight of the WOD Games. This is Dan Williams at Range of Motion, and I'll see you next week.